Hey everybody, thank you for joining. Happy Friday. This is going to be a quick one, but chock full of really good news. So super exciting day. And let me talk to you why I'm going to talk today about Bitcoin, Ethereum, fiat currencies, and Tesla. So an exciting show ahead of you. And as usual, in math we trust. Second of all, disclaimer, this is edutainment. This is not financial advice. Even though I may get very passionate about certain things, don't get too excited. And of course, we have some new artwork back there. So I know you guys appreciate that. So every day, try and mix up the art. Now let's jump in and immediately start talking about the bright future and one of the reasons why I'm so excited and I want to share that with you all. So as I always say, the tsunami of money is coming between Morgan Stanley, they're going to start taking in that money next week and start putting it to good use. And that's going to have an impact on Bitcoin. So as all the stimulus money slowly beginning to hit as people fund their crypto accounts, we have the Coinbase IPO coming up in April, which is going to have a huge impact on things like Galaxy, Voyager and a lot of other companies. We've got the Ethereum stuff. I'm going to talk a bit about Ethereum and some of the news there as well. Some good, some bad. We've got Grayscale adding some additional funds. We've got some Grayscale discounts happening too. We've got ETFs galore coming. We've got stimulus of 1.9 trillion, an additional 3 trillion coming as well for infrastructure, as well as European stimulus of 2.2 trillion dollars, about 1.8, 1.9 trillion euros. The world has now realized that inflation is very real and fiat currencies around the world are crumbling. Again, that's not necessarily good news, but it's actually good news for Bitcoin. So that's why I mean the future is bright. Now, option expiry is behind us. I know many of you were nervous about this. 6.1 billion in Bitcoin options expired. There was one big one there, the big blue line. And the blue lines are put options and the green lines are call options. The blue line spike it was at the $40,000 strike and that expired worthless. So somebody or some group of individuals made a huge bet that Bitcoin would be below 40K today. And that didn't happen. But that's what rattled a lot of people because a lot of people see big positions made by investors and they think that's going to be the direction of where Bitcoin is going. I'm actually looking at Bitcoin right now. It's up $3,537, about to breach 55000 It's hard to believe we were nearly at 50000 yesterday. Anyway, again, don't let these things worry you too much. And I'll talk more as to why it's less important as we go forward. And net net, the derivatives and the positions that were taken paint a very bullish picture, much more than a negative picture, despite that very large put strike. So again, don't get freaked out. Always stay calm and relaxed. We're going to get through this and all roads lead to Bitcoin. I'll share some more good news now as well. Ever since the Bitcoin expiration is behind us, we can see it's up, up and away for Bitcoin. And I put this slide together an hour ago. It was up. 3,400, now it's up 3,600. So again, nothing but goodness. Now let's talk a little bit about April. April is a good month because it's the month of my birthday. Don't wanna to give too much away online, but uh, one of the great things, as you know, I like to crunch numbers. I analyzed all the months and historically, April is the best month for Bitcoin. What's really weird though, is if you look at the last four years, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, the average return was uncannily close. I could not believe it when I ran these numbers. Between 32.9% and 34.8%. That's such a narrow margin of monthly returns over four years, including the crypto winter. So again, if history repeats itself, which it doesn't necessarily do, the average return for Bitcoin in the month of April is 48%. You saw some stellar months there as well. And uh, we'll see where this goes. A little April news in Bitcoin. And the other thing that's very important as well, as Bitcoin gets bigger, it becomes less volatile. And I drew two lines in this chart. The first one is the red one, which includes all history. And this is the standard deviation of daily returns for Bitcoin which basically shows you the volatility. And you can see that over time, it's going down dramatically, literally going down from nearly 15 all the way down to five, which is a very positive sign. Now, if, you, if I exclude the C19 crash, 
you can see the green line there. So if we didn't have that peak, it would be even lower. So again, as the asset class gets bigger, it becomes less volatile. Now let's talk about green crypto. The other big trend is moving towards more environmentally friendly crypto base. And as we know today, renewable energy is used for about 62% of all Bitcoin mining. And it's becoming more popular now. Argo Blockchain and DMG are looking to launch the first ever green Bitcoin, which is purely from clean energy mining operations. Once this happens, and once this becomes more mainstream, the people that throw foot at Bitcoin for not being environmentally friendly or burning too much energy will no longer have an argument, which is good news. Another nail in the coffin for all the fudsters out there. I'll talk more about a few of them towards the end of the show as well. In terms of Bitcoin supply update, this is an interesting one. We have the lowest liquidity in 12 months, and we had the largest number of Bitcoin leaving the exchanges today. That big spike, red spike down. So what this really goes to show is people are pulling their crypto off the exchanges like there is no tomorrow. Now, this means two things. One, the people that are doing it are long-term investors. They're not retail speculators. And number two, the supply is drying up. And we all know what that's going to mean. So, again, more good news. In terms of Grayscale, I get a ton of questions over the last week or two about the Bitcoin, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust being sold at a discount. Why is that? Well, the people that initially made the investments were redeeming their shares and therefore they want their money. And in order for Grayscale as a fund, because they can't reduce the number of shares that are issued like other types of funds, they have to bring in money to pay those that want redemption. And to make that balance happen, they're forced to sell their shares at a discount to bring the money in to give it to people that want to leave and that's exactly what's happening so again don't be concerned but i urge everybody that has a retirement account and wants a piece of bitcoin why not buy it at nine percent or twelve percent off it's uh it again not investment advice but worth doing for sure a little news about kentucky i had to do a little bit of homework into kentucky the state here but lawmakers approved a bill to provide breaks, tax breaks to crypto miners. Now it's like the city of Miami wants to go hard into crypto, so does Kentucky. I had to dig into a few things. First of all, the average cost per kilowatt hour of energy in Kentucky is nine cents. So they may not be the most competitive, but hopefully they can give them a break on energy costs as well. And only 6% of energy electricity in Kentucky is from renewable resources so they need to up their game in that area as well but uh, I do hope they can pull this off I think it'll be great for the mainstream adoption of Bitcoin and mining across many many different states and it'll also be good because I saw that 22.6 percent of people in Kentucky are on welfare so they need jobs they need energy creation job creation and this could be a good avenue for that so good luck Kentucky keep up the good work now switching gears a little bit talking about ethereum there's this whole <laughs> world of the metaverse you know and with the confluence of c19 and generations and people being at home and people being bored people are doing a lot more online and as a result of that you have a big expansion in the worlds of vr and ar virtual reality and augmented reality as well as this whole world of extended reality. Kids, grown-ups, they're all now doing more online, and it's a red-hot area. But the big thing here is the new growth of the world of virtual real estate. People buying billboards in digital worlds and selling advertising on them. So again, all run on Ethereum, and again, another big plus for Ethereum as we go forward. Again, there's no other stable smart contract platform out there yet and uh, they're doing the lion's share but there is some bad news regarding ethereum not altogether too bad news but the optimism release is delayed and the reason they are delaying it is because apparently 
folks, the developers fail to consider partners, timelines, and requirements. And this layer two platform is built on top of Ethereum and Optimism is designed to help scaling to reduce the gas fees involved in Ethereum. So not altogether perfect, but again, nothing is perfect in this world, but they are investing heavily, big money behind them, like Anderson Horowitz Group, etc. So that will be cracked. Again, they have much more developer horsepower behind Ethereum than any of the other platforms. And with the advent of what I mentioned before with the metaverse, much more is happening in that world anyway. So all good news. And switching gears, again, talk a little bit about Tesla. We saw a Tesla dip today down to 600 bucks. A few weeks back, it hit 540. And we're gonna say, ooh, remember, in March 2021, when Tesla hit $540, that was a good time to buy. So again, I'm very, very bullish in Tesla. And let me tell you why. So for those of you who are Tesla fanatics, you're familiar with the original Elon Musk master plan from nearly 10 years ago about their plans for cars. Well, now their master plan is getting much more powerful. So people still confuse Tesla as a car company, and they are not. Their AI autonomy is close to being groundbreaking, which is magnificent. They have the best in class battery technology on earth by far. They have a huge solar business. They have an energy storage business that's running now. And big proof of concept in places like Australia, doing one in Israel and Texas now after the big Texas outage. They are doing more with crypto. The big news this week about you, you're able to buy a Tesla with your Bitcoin and they are keeping it not very good to fiat. Again, big. Also, most exciting is their auto bidder is now handling more than 1.2 gigawatt hours of energy, which is enough to power a million homes. And it's just beginning. So what I see all this going is you take into account things like Starlink and of course the SpaceX and the autonomy and the auto bidder and the energy storage. It's all going after everything. It's not just transportation. It's not just vehicles, but it's the de like the decentralization of people running their own grids and being able to buy and sell maybe energy for crypto down the line. Who knows? Tesla could become the biggest utility on earth as they go forward. That could be the new master plans. A lot of people talking about this right now. We don't know where it's going. But again, the point is Tesla have their fingers in so many pots and they have so much stuff that they can monetize. They can sell an upgrade to an existing vehicle for $10,000 and it's pure profit, pure profit, 10 grand. Um, and that's just the beginning of what they can do. So again, the more I learn about Tesla and the more I understand the inner workings of what they're planning, the more bullish I become, just like with Bitcoin. So bear that in mind, not investment advice, of course. Now, in some FUD news, I can't be all good news, but we have our friend here, the head of the International Settlements Bank, and I won't even mention his name, but he's gasping to krill crypto, and he's so desperate, and nobody's listening. Just look at his face. Now he believes that people that are using cryptocurrencies are doing so to evade laws. That's been proven completely false. So again, he doesn't have a leg to stand on, but I had to share some of that to balance out all the good news. And also, in some sad news for people in Turkey, and I have a couple of Turkish friends, this was kind of interesting. The president of Turkey, Erdogan, urges the people of Turkey to sell their gold to support the collapse in currency. And he said, please, I ask my citizens to sell their gold and invest in banks. Okay, and then he said, do not believe those who say we are finished or sunken or dying out. We will stay strong against the shock waves, he added. So, okay, for all my people out there, imagine your president says, okay, take all your Bitcoin, all your diamonds, convert them to fiat. That's depreciating at sometimes 20% a day, like the lira in Turkey, and we'll take care of you. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. I just thought that was super interesting and just the sheer desperation is scary. But remember, 
that could be coming to you one day where your leadership in your country could be saying, hey, let's prop up our own banking industry. But I'd love to see how many people in Turkey are actually doing that today. So let's say a prayer for those people in Turkey and hope they are not losing everything they have. That's just a shocking proposition. I've never heard such desperate words. Actually, I have. I'll take that back. I have had, I have heard such desperate words from a leader of my in my time, but that was very interesting. And in conclusions, real quick, as usual, I'm going to talk about the Bitcoin conclusions. I am more bullish than ever on Bitcoin. The more stuff I uncover, the more bullish I get. There's nothing but good news out there. April is historically the best month. Expiry was a nothing burger. In fact, looking at the Bitcoin price right now, as we speak, Bitcoin just shot up another Whoa, $400, just in the minutes that I've been doing this. No, $600, it's just gone straight vertical. So again, the expiry is a nothing burger. Volatility is falling, green crypto is growing, Kentucky wants in, supply is falling rapidly. Who bought the dip out there? I'd like to ask everybody. And of course, GBTC is a bargain. Get some if you can. So it's a little bit about the Bitcoin conclusions, a little bit about Ethereum and Tesla, Ethereum is running more stuff than ever before with the metaverse. The optimism release is a bit delayed. We don't know how far, but that's not exactly good news. But it's not too bad. At least they're making sure they tie their shoelaces before they start to run the marathon. Tesla is deeply down. Remember March 2021 when you could buy a Tesla for 540 bucks? Interesting time. So uh, the master plan, again, more bullish than ever, just like with Bitcoin. And Elon Musk is gunning for Apple's market capitalization. And finally, FUD conclusions. The arguments are waning against crypto and fiat is sadly failing out there in the world today. So all roads lead to Bitcoin. And uh, by the way, I just want to say something real quick. So Patreon for the Patreon community, anybody thinking of joining, wait till April 1st. Uh, we now have a community of 2,000 strong, brilliant members in very few weeks. But the way their billing works is they bill at the, at the if you join now, they'll also bill you at the first of the month. So don't do that or else you get billed twice. So just want to make you all aware. And um, if you like this content, hit the like, subscribe, and see you all soon. Have a good weekend. Bye.